Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the weekend edition of Bible Discovery TV where we have a chance to look at what we're going to do today, which is review. That's right. Corey is here and she's going to help us. Janice, Corey, what are we reviewing? <laughs> so we are going back and we are looking at everything that we've read and studied this week. So that is going to take us from Isaiah chapter 60 all the way to Jeremiah chapter 16. So if you've read along with us, you should know what we're talking about already. If you've fallen a bit behind, don't worry, we'll get you caught back up. Jeremiah 15, verses 1 through 7. Then the Lord said to me, Even if Moses and Samuel stood before me, my mind would not be favorable toward this people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. And it shall be, if they say to you, Where should we go? Then you shall tell them, Thus says the Lord, Such as are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as are for the famine to the famine, and such as are for the captivity to the captivity. And I will appoint over them four forms of destruction, says the Lord, the sword to slay, the dogs to drag, the birds of the heavens and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. I will hand them over to trouble to all kingdoms of the earth because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, king of Judah, for what he did in Jerusalem. For who will have pity on you, O Jerusalem? Or who will bemoan you? Or who will turn aside to ask how you are doing? You have forsaken me, says the Lord. You have gone backward. Therefore, I will stretch out my hand against you and destroy you. I am weary of relenting, and I will winnow them with a winnowing fan in the gates of the land. I will bereave them of children. I will destroy my people since they do not return from their ways. Jeremiah chapter 15, verses 1 through 7. Many people live as if there's no accountability in life. But what if that's wrong? What if we are accountable? You know, the Bible tells us the truth about God, his plans for us and all of humanity. As we read God's word, that is the Bible, we have an understanding of who Jesus is. And he is not dead. He is alive. Praise God. Now, we would do well to know and understand the good news of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 and 9 explains how to be saved. It says, the word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we have preached. That if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We are saved from the destructive power of hell itself. Through Jesus Christ, hell is real. And praise God for Jesus Christ. That's absolutely true. And as we've taken the last few days and we have looked at Jeremiah's speaking to the people of Israel, those who are lost and those who are exiled, I would remind us that God still speaks to us today. And on this day, on this weekend, we take these passages and carefully listen to how Jesus Christ presented Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah is a great prophet, by the way. He was uh, called a weeping prophet because of the book of Lamentations, which is after the book of Jeremiah. It's lamenting over the fall of Jerusalem. Very important. And Jeremiah lived in this time. And you take your Bible guide and turn to today's passage because God is going to deal with us on this. And let me just say that uh, you have the address on the bottom of your screen that you can write to us or call us and get a hold of your passage if you would like. Or you can go to www.biblediscoverytv.com. Biblediscoverytv.com. Click on the button, which has the picture of the guide on it. And uh, then you, what you can do is uh, make a donation in any amount. It'll take you right to the PDF files, which you can view on your screen, and we'll send you a copy. 
uh, if you click the box. And let me just say that the, the streamtv.com or biblediscoverytv.com, both go to the same place, biblediscoverytv.com is a place where you can watch 24 seven the uh, webcasting that we do. And we have a, a webcast, a live webcast called Family and Friends on there. And it's all the stuff we do, the prayer meetings and everything else. We're very excited about it. It's very good. We also have the programs. You can watch the program. Some of you are right now watching the program from that particular place. So that is good. Well, today we're going to be looking at We Cannot Return. What? What do you mean we cannot return? What do you mean? Father, I pray today that you would help us to see what we mean by this. And I pray, Lord, that people would listen carefully to the word of God as we focus on this, because the word is so specific to us. Help us, Lord, to hear this in Jesus' wonderful name. And we said together, amen. Look at the 15th chapter of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a prophet speaking to the people and he was talking to those in exile and he was talking to those around him. It was not a happy time. It was a very difficult time. And here is what Jeremiah said. Then the Lord said to me, even if Moses and Samuel stood before me, Moses and Samuel stood before me, my mind would not be favorable towards this people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. And it shall be that if they say to you, where should we go? Then you shall tell them, thus says the Lord, such as are for death to death, such as are for sword to sword, and such as are for famine to famine, and such as are for captivity to the captivity. Verse three says, and I will appoint over them four forms of destruction, says the Lord, the sword to slay, the dogs to drag, the birds of heaven, and the beast of the earth to devour and to destroy. And I will hand them over to trouble to all kingdoms of the earth because, and this is the important part, because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, king of Judah, for what he did in Jerusalem. What? God listens and understands everything we do. And there is no mercy beyond what God has done. God has displayed his mercy accordingly. God gives us mercy and he gives us truth through Jesus Christ. Listen to him. Listen to the Lord. The mercy of God is here for one reason. It's not just to make everything all right for us, but it is to clear our sin so that we have access to heaven itself, getting out of the ravages of hell, which is real. God gives us the ability to attain heaven, beloved, because the Lord knows there's no other way for us to get there except through his mercy. Very important that we understand that. And we become like that. We understand and, and say, yes, Lord. Okay, now let's go back to the scripture, Jeremiah 15, 5 and 6. For who will have pity on you, O Jerusalem? Or who will bemoan you? Or who will turn aside to ask you how you're doing? You have forsaken me, says the Lord. You've gone backwards. Therefore, I will stretch out my hand against you and destroy you. I am weary of relenting, God says. So there's an important part to look here. There is no turning back with God. Once we have decided, that's it. The time in which we live will soon change, beloved. Take Jesus as your Lord now. Take Jesus as your Savior now. Come to Jesus now. Now is the time for salvation. Now is the time for the Lord. Look at the last part of Scripture. This becomes very important. Jeremiah 15, 7, he says here in and I will winnow them with a winnowing fan in the gates of the land. I will bereave them of children. I will destroy my people since they do not return from their ways. Jeremiah, the prophet, the weeping prophet. You see, here's what we understand. There is a point where God will not turn back to help. Jesus is the Lord God Almighty. Jesus Christ 
is the Lord. Beloved, we need to understand that there comes an end to the time of grace. There comes an end. That end is rapidly approaching us. It's part of the end time sequence. That's what I believe because I believe the Bible literally. And where not literally, it's communicating a literal truth where it speaks in parables and figuratively. And all of those truths point to one thing. There comes a time to the period of grace where there's an end. Revelation 19 tells you the truth. And God comes to judge the nations. And beloved, you need to come to Jesus now. Now's the time. We don't have time in the future. I'm asking you. I'm begging you. Come to Jesus now. Learn who he is. Pray this way. Say, Father, I pray. Jesus Christ, I ask you to come into my life. Jesus Christ, I know that I'm a person who is bound in sin. And I ask that you would forgive me of my sin. I repent. I don't want to sin anymore. So help me. May your Holy Spirit be a part of my life. I need you today. Forgive me of my sin. And I, I believe that you came and you died on the cross. And when you died on the cross, you allowed yourself to do that, to pay the cost of sin. And all of the sudden, you miraculously, after three days of being dead, came to life, seen by over 500 people. I believe it happened. And Lord Jesus Christ, come into my life because you said, go into all the world and teach the good news of Jesus Christ to every creature, that they may know the gospel, that they may understand what you're doing, and that they may be saved and come into the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, I also ask that you would help me to stay in your word. Your word, the 66 books by the 40 authors over 1,500 years, all with the same theme of Jesus Christ. Help me to stay in your word. I put it in my heart and I pray in Jesus' name that you would make me understand who you are. Thank you, Lord. And we all said together, every one of us said together, amen and amen. the prophet Jeremiah and the Old Testament book that's named after him, but we're going to be attempting to establish a foundation of history. Uh, and on that foundation, the idea is you will be able to better understand and interpret uh, what you read in the Old Testament book of Jeremiah. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hembry. The weekend edition of this program is amazing, Janice. We have to study some things that we've looked at all week. Well, we need to review. It's good to review. Exactly. And whenever you review, you, you can't really review the Bible without studying it. And uh, I think it becomes important to, to realize that whenever we look at the Bible, we are focusing on what God said to us and study to us. So I think that's important. Uh, Corey is here to tell us what she's doing. Corey, let's look at what, we're, what we've studied and what we're doing now. Yeah, so my goal is just to take you uh, through the chapters that we have read and give you a little uh, summary of what we've read this entire week. So that, you know, if, if, you're, if you've been studying through with us, this is treat it kind of like a test or a, or a quiz and see if you can remember all of the different chapters that we've gone through this past week. If you've fallen behind, this is gonna get you caught back up so that you can just continue reading with us uh, on tomorrow's program uh, if you don't have time to to go back and read all these chapters. We're going to be recapping Isaiah chapter 60 all the way to Jeremiah chapter 16. And 14, cast, if you want to jump in at any point as I'm going through this and talk about a chapter, please just jump in. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep going. So, okay, 
Isaiah chapter 60. So we're finishing up, but we finished up the book of Isaiah uh, this week. And Isaiah chapter 60 talks about the future glory of Jerusalem, uh, which is also called Zion here in, I, in Isaiah. It's, it's, it's a bit interchangeable. And I want to read you verse two and three. It says, but the Lord rises upon you. This is talking to Jerusalem or Zion. His glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. So this is foreshadowing uh, a global ministry uh, that will come out of Jerusalem or Zion, not just for the for uh, Israel and Judah, but also for other nations coming to this light. Now, in chapter 61, this this has been completely interpreted for us as Christians, because when we get into Isaiah chapter 61, it's talking about the mission of the Messiah. And Jesus uh, in Luke chapter four actually claims these verses for himself. He reads them in a synagogue and creates quite the kerfuffle because he is claiming that this chapter is about him and is about his mission. So I w I'm going to read what Jesus quotes. I'm going to read Isaiah 61 verse one and two. It says this, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. And the chapter goes on like this. So it's a really interesting chapter to read. Uh, if you haven't read it, this is one I would encourage you to go back and read before you move on. But we are going to move on right now. Chapter 62 of Isaiah uh, is about how God is going to vindicate Zion. He's going to redeem Jerusalem and he's going to give her a new name. And we're told that he's going to call her Hephzibah and Belua, which mean my delight is in her and married. So it's a restoration. It's a, it's a repairing of the relationship between God uh, and Israel, between God and Jerusalem. Uh, because a lot of Isaiah has hasn't gone this way. There's been a lot of judgment. And so now here comes this restoration uh, of Zion. Now, into chapter 63, we have uh, the day of vengeance being spoken of, and it's pretty graphic. Uh, this is where, you know, the Messiah figure, God is seen as treading the wine press. Uh, and, and as someone who goes in to tread grapes to make wine, they get splash back up on their robe of, of the juice of the grapes and, and all of that. The garment of God is said to be splattered with blood. So this is quite a graphic uh, image here. And uh, so it's talking about the judgment of the nations. And then in the last half of 63, as a complete contrast with that graphic violence, we have a, a, a praise of God's compassion and kindness. So we get both of these natures of God spoken of in chapter 63, his wrath and his vengeance, but also um, uh, paired with his compassion and his mercy and his kindness. Chapter 64 is a continuation of this, really. Uh, and it's a longing for, it's these people of the Lord, this remnant of the Lord, longing for him to come and looking uh, for his help. Now, in 65, we have judgment on the rebellious people of God. Uh, and but that is, it's not just the judgment like all the rest of Isaiah has spoken of, the the bent of this one is that the rebellious people are going to be judged, but then the faithful of God, that remnant that remains, uh, they're going to rejoice. They're going to sing over this, over their redemption. And there's going to be a new creation of a new heavens and a new earth. So this is Isaiah chapter 65 that begins to give us glimpses into God's ultimate plan of the new heavens and the new earth. One of the things that I wanted to say, Corey, is that the 65 begins uh, in a very interesting way. It says, I was sought by those who did not ask mm -hmm. for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. And this is a fascinating read and could relate to the Gentiles uh, coming in. I don't know. It's just a, it's a really, and he says, I said, here I am, here I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> to a nation that was not called by my name. I, this, this is absolutely stunning from a Jewish prophet 
for this time. Really interesting. Mm -hmm. And that God would say, here I am. Exactly, exactly. Right? He's identifying himself. It's amazing. God doesn't watch us from far away. He's right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Waiting, waiting for you to call out to him, waiting for us to call out to him. And he says, here I am. That, that's amazing. amazing. That's amazing. Very good. Now, I, Isaiah chapter 66 is the last chapter. And so I think it's very fitting. It talks, it, it really emphasizes the holiness of God, which is a really good uh, conclusion to the book of Isaiah. But it also ties back in, again, God's redemptive plan of this new heavens and new earth. So that brings us to the close of Isaiah. And then we also began the book of Jeremiah, which is really interesting. So Jeremiah takes place a little bit later after the time, after the lifetime and the ministry of Isaiah. And in chapter one, we learn exactly where Jeremiah is in time. Uh, the kings are listed during whose reigns he prophesied, which is really helpful to Bible students because we can then go back to Kings and Chronicles and reread the reigns of those kings so that we know what's going on historically. But in chapter one, Jeremiah gets his call and he sees a really interesting vision. Uh, but then right away, we jump into chapter two and chapter three, and we get this really long history of how the people of God, these descendants of Abraham, have rejected God. So uh, it's, it's really an indictment uh, from God uh, against his own people. So that's in chapter two and chapter three. Now, in chapter four, really the main thrust of chapter four uh, follows up that rejection of the people. And God says, if you will return to me, I will return to you, please return to me. But then also he talks about how judgment is on its way uh, uh, from the north. So this is the beginning of the prophecies that Jeremiah has that Babylon, this northern kingdom of Babylon is going to come and uh, bring judgment on the people. Uh, in chapter five, we get this really interesting throwback uh, to Sodom and Gomorrah. So uh, God says, go in it, chapter five, verse one, go up and down the streets of Jerusalem, look around and consider, search through her squares. If you can find but one person who deals honestly and seeks the truth, I will forgive this city. But of course it can't be done. So this is, this is God contrasting and comparing here Jerusalem in Jeremiah's age with Sodom and Gomorrah. And that, that would have been a massive slap, a massive insult uh, at that time. Now in uh, chapter six, we learn that Jerusalem will be brought under siege by the Babylonian empire. Uh, in chapter seven, um, this is really interesting. We learn that Jeremiah goes and prophesies in the gate of the Lord's temple. This would have been tremendously insulting because we learned that there was already prophets who were there. They were just false prophets. And God has him go there and talk about the worthlessness of faking true religion, faking being faithful to God. So it's an indictment against the religious people in Jerusalem. Chapter eight then and chapter nine uh, go on to talk about I the idolatry of Jerusalem and the judgment that will come. Chapter 10 talks specifically about the worthlessness of their idols, how foolish this concept of idolatry is and yet it has become so ingrained in their day-to-day -day lives. Uh, in chapter 11, we learn uh, God brings it back again. You broke the covenant. You were my covenant people and you broke this and now you're cursed. In chapter 11, we also get this uh, history of Jeremiah where people back from his hometown actually make a plot to assassinate him because he's just an embarrassment to them. Uh, and he's the only prophet prophesying destruction. And so they try to kill him. But God, of course, reveals it to him. In Jeremiah chapter 12, we get a complaint of Jeremiah, which is really interesting that Jeremiah is allowed to have a voice to speak back to God. And he brings a complaint against God about God's justice. Essentially says, why do the wicked prosper? And God's answer essentially is, I'm dealing with it. I've got it. I'm dealing with it. 
Uh, in chapter 13, Jeremiah buries his linen belt. Uh, he does this physical display and it's God saying, I'm going to ruin the pride of Judah and Jerusalem. Jeremiah laments over all of this stuff in chapter 14. He, wa- he says that, you know, it's better off that I wasn't even born and God has to deal with that. Uh, This continues on into chapter 15, and it's so intense. God's judgment is so intense. He says that even if Moses or Samuel came back from the dead and interceded uh, for these people, I would not lament. I would not relent. And then Jeremiah laments over this, prompting God to promise to save Jeremiah. Uh, And he interestingly tells Jeremiah to repent, to lead the people of God in repentance. So we see even this man who is outstanding among his generation, God says, no, you still need to repent. Lead my people in repentance, which is a really interesting theme of chapter 15. Now that brings us to chapter 16, where we read about God removing his blessing, three things, his blessing, his love, and his pity from the people of Judah and Jerusalem. Therefore, Jeremiah is not to participate in three things, marriage and children, which represent the love and blessing of God, and funerals, which would represent pity or having God's pity. So God has removed blessing, love, and pity. So Jeremiah is not to be a part of the society in those ways. So that wraps up. Wow. Yeah. Very interesting. You know, it's just amazing when we study the, the scripture here. We're into the study of the prophets. It's very good. We've run out of time. So we'll see you Monday on the program.